this video, I want to share my journey, how I went from a job of completely doing Excel to start building models and machine learning. And, you know, if you keep yourself curious, I think luck will come to you and help you land your next adventure. So this is me graduating from stats undergrad degree. Most of people would say it's so relevant to the data field, but I kind of disagree with that because when I got out of college, I felt like I learned a lot of stats formulas and a lot of distributions, and I learned of a lot of R. But in reality, that I was always given a CSV file as a data set, and all I need to do is manipulate the data sets very, very minor, and just like just to run some sort of models or like some sort of um, you know couple lines. I also graduated in December, which is not the best time to graduate um, because I had to. Um, you know, look for jobs during Christmas time, which, you know, most of the companies just not hiring an entry level job at that time. So I felt like really like, you know, in my heart, I was like, Oh my gosh, no, like, I don't want to do this. And I when I look at job descriptions, I just feel like none of my skill sets or anything I learned in college really helped me with getting an entry level job, because all of them says they require SQL, they require Excel, and I did not do anything related. So I did have on campus interviews from several companies and they're like big companies and small companies like Cisco. But then I felt like I was so busy learning so many things at once because I didn't have the right skill set. I didn't learn how to use Excel. I didn't learn how to write SQL. And the my only skill set of writing R doesn't seem to be very helpful in these entry level jobs. So I ended up, you know, looking at all the things I can learn, like the stats are that I already know, but not very good at, you know, like, you know, very basic R knowledge. And I don't, I didn't even know SQL and I didn't, like, I had no idea about Excel uh, somehow for some reason. I ended up, like, trying to learn all these things, like, trying to review what I've learned on the left-hand side and trying to learn new things on the right-hand side. I think it was just, like, too overwhelming for me that I couldn't focus on one thing, but I also felt like interviews were, like, you have to know everything because there is no, like, subjects that they say, oh, we're only gonna test you on this, but not other things. So I, you know, really failed miserably on a lot of the first few phone calls with any company that if they will just ask me some simple SQL questions like, oh, where are the joints? And I'll have like no idea how to answer it. So then um, I tried to apply to a lot of jobs, but I kept getting rejected um, because it's just very competitive for entry level job anyway. But then I, I was like, you know, keeping myself open minded thinking like, oh, I just maybe have to get some sort of job that's related to data, like any sort of data. So I ended up <laughs> maybe like working for a month at like accounts payable department and like a super, super small uh, business, uh, like for 20 people. And then all I would be doing is like key entering the, you know, like how the, from a receipt to entering the numbers into a system and then trying to do like some sort of balance sheets in, I actually don't even know what those are. Anymore. So after applying to hundreds of jobs and got rejected so many times, I finally landed a job at a hardware company. Uh, but the job of duty was to, you know, on a weekly basis, I'll get a huge Excel file and I have to do a lot of VLOOKUP and pivot table to somehow summarize from these like 500k, a million rows of data in Excel. And I couldn't even run the data on my laptop that I had to actually get a desktop to run these Excel files because they're so huge. And I have to summarize in the executive decks every week to about, you know, what their findings. And I feel like I was, it was so much manual work I was thinking like, you know, where, where did I get my, this Excel file from? It's from a person and I wanted to trace back to a source of the data source. So see, you know, what I can automate if possible. So what I ended up doing is trace back to the person who gave me these Excel files and ask him, you know, where are this database coming from? And is there a way of automating this that we can, you know, build these report from these database and then directly to build like dashboards. So what I ended up doing is that, you know, automating this whole process 
and building, like working with this data BI engineer to come up with uh, logic and like metrics to put into these dashboards that we ha we can use so that, you know, I can automate this whole process and I don't have to do these every week. At the time I was making about 62K. So after I was laid off, I went back to the stage of, you know, thinking of all the skill, technical skills that I really need. But I started going into a process of elimination because I realized I can't really learn and try to, you know, build all these things at once. So what I ended up doing is kind of looking for jobs that would actually, you know, that actually require some of these skill sets and then start eliminating some of the ones I think we can, I can develop later on, but I need to focus on one thing at once. So then I looked at all the jobs and um, apparently a Google contracting position reached out to me and they said that they promised that will, I will be working a lot with SQL, which I didn't really do the actual work of doing the, like the query part or the dashboarding part at the CK job. It was me like putting things together. So what I ended up doing is taking that job that I will actually learn how to write SQL. Well, I mean, I took like a 30 minute YouTube video to learn like the basic SQL just to land a contracting job at Google. And then just so I can, you know, actually learn SQL and actually has personal or professional experience. I decided to, you know, eliminate all these other skills I don't really need, or I mean, at the moment, and then focus on SQL. Uh, this job I landed at Google Contracting or roughly around like 72K a year, uh, which is okay. I mean, it seemed like pretty good. But then um, I pretty much did this job for eight months to learn. Like the first three months was kind of, you know, very steep learning curve that I have to, I have to kind of pretend and I also have to like learn very quickly on these jobs because I have to immediately build dashboards for people and so um that was like very good to push myself to learn quickly as much as possible in, in like three months and then like eight months out I decided that it's time to actually look for a full-time job and that I'm ready for you know something better so then I ended up landing at a mobile game company uh like this one, not really. Um, but like I had to, you know, uh, I guess I had to, of course, show that I was able to write SQL, I was to be able to build dashboards. And as a junior data analyst, that's really like all they want, like they were asking for. Uh, but I didn't, like they didn't tell me, but like apparently on a job, it's actually kind of required to actually write some Python code because we have to run uh, quite some like A-B tests um that they didn't really talk about but i guess good thing that it's actually you know that they do that on a daily basis because you know a mobile game or gaming industry is just like very fast paced company because like a game can die out in two years and we have to you know make as much as possible in that two years before the game dies so i ended up actually learning python um on the job to do like some a b tests and then I also learned how to use GitHub because uh, we always we have ver we we do version control in Git, uh, which is a really good practice. Um, that because I've never done it before. So those are the two extra skill sets I learned from this job to learn how to do A/B tests in Python, and then also to learn how to use Git uh, to you know do version control on your on our queries, which I guess. Most of software engineers. And this time around, uh, I went from 72K to 100K. So after the mobile game company, I was going very hardcore on the job applications and I would have like three on sites a week and like just a lot of job applications. And I finally landed uh, a job at a rice sharing company and it was nice, uh, but it was you know, working at a people analytics department, which wasn't really exactly what I wanted to do, but I took it anyway, because I thought about, you know, the opportunities of learning at a big company, and also just, you know, understanding how maybe, you know, having potential to work on other projects, which I ended up did uh, working on other uh, projects on the product side, which was very exciting. But uh, I did not really learn any technical skill sets because it was like building dashboards from ground up, which I already knew how to do, 
which it gave me a lot more time to myself and which I think it's it was a good um you know place to be after working for like 12 hours a day on a very steep learning curve at a mobile game company so I was you know able to enjoy myself but also you know look for opportunities to move from like people data to more of a product data which is more I was interested in and volunteer to these projects so then I can you know get exposed to um, big tech company and having the name on my resume so at this job, I was making around 185K total comp, which was not that bad, but I also had five competing offer at a time, so which helped a lot. And then I started my current job where I was given a product analytics and data science in my title. I thought it was kind of nice to go back to focus on product side, um, but I also was trying to look for opportunities where I can apply, you know, data science or machine learning techniques. And I proposed some of the projects and uh, or like volunteer to do a lot of these projects. So then I, you know, good thing that my mentor was, uh, you know, encouraging me to, uh, to, you know, if you don't know how to do it, just learn it and then you can do it. And then, you know, you got to prove yourself to actually be able to do it. And I, I learned a lot from my other senior data scientist to like how to actually uh, do it properly which is really nice so then I was like you know you just gotta do it and you also just gotta volunteer yourself or like keep yourself curious to these opportunities where you can help the data science project in any way and to learn about them and then essentially to transition into these kind of roles and like actually start building machine learning model yourself so I feel like I did it. Um, many people would say that I'm very lucky throughout my career. I agree with that, but also at the same time that I think you need to keep yourself very curious about, you know, different options of doing something and that you can, you know, learn these skills one at a time and then gain over all these technical skills that you need to be able to accomplish what you want. Uh, it's not, a, you know, like one, one night and then you can just understand everything. I had to, you know, prioritize what I should learn.